Welcome to Face the Facts. It's good to have everybody here once again. We are the day after one of the most crushing, embarrassing losses that Boston sports history has seen in quite a long time. Um, I'm still speechless on how everything went down with the Bruins. It was pretty embarrassing. We're going to talk about it a little bit. We're going to talk about a little bit more with the Celtics on their upcoming plans on how things look a little bit more. Um, we'll look into the NBA, see what the finals look. Same goes with the NHL. We'll look more towards what the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference will look like for their finals. Uh, we're going to talk baseball because that's all we got right now. We have the Red Sox, so it's all eyes are and all attention is on them now. And then we're going to talk about um, Mr. Mac and Cheese. That's the, that's the nickname that Cam Newton has given Mac Jones, apparently, on the Patriots. So we'll talk a little bit about that and the Cam Newton hand injury first. So as you know, we have Tom Smith with an interesting background today. And uh, we have Phil in the usual zebra background himself there, too. Um, let's go over the Bruins first. Um, I think we all know I picked the Bruins to win in five or six games. I'm wrong. Tom was along the same lines on the same capacity there. Series started out fine, but then things started to go from good to bad very quickly. You saw a goal change that was made from a very trots, the coach for the Islanders. Then you saw, I think the crushing blow of the series was the knockout from Clutterbuck on Brandon Kahlo. Knocked Brandon Kahlo out of the series, basically. Then everything kind of went downhill. Tuka Rask was playing through something. Some surgeries coming. We don't know 100% what it is. I have a good indication it's a back surgery, which is not good if you're a goaltender. We got to think about the future again here, because if you followed me on Twitter and if you saw my Instagram stuffs, same shit, different year. Same shit, different year. It's deja vu. Let's talk with Tom first. What are your yeah. overall thoughts and opinions? I'm um, sure you're thinking along the same lines of me. I mean, yeah, Tuco is playing through some back problems. Um, but, I mean, he played as, as good as – you know, he could. Um, so, I mean, that, you can't even really use that as an excuse because he, he played he played pretty well. The team uh, was awful, atrocious the last three games of the series, really. Uh, I mean, he, you, you had a chance to win three of the first four games. They went to overtime, and you couldn't – you could only pull it off in one of them. One or two of them. Um, yeah, I mean, Carlo went down, but they still, I mean, the defense, the defense was pretty good. It was the, it was the offense. The offense couldn't get anything going. And, you know, when the, when the puck was in the Bruins zone in the defensive zone, they couldn't get it out. Um, and penalties hurt. I mean, it, the, the refs, the refs weren't great either. That doesn't help, but specifically game five i mean even yeah. last night game six i mean there was a a, a disgusting hit that was on uh, charlie mcavoy which was late after the whistle and their intentions on the islanders was to take out the biggest people to impact the bruins and mcavoy well, missed a couple shifts so i want to say i was surprised he actually was able to get back onto the ice well there was the knee to knee one too yeah that was the crazy game. Yeah, that was with Craig. No, that was McAvoy. It was McAvoy. Oh, it was McAvoy. Okay. Yeah. Yep, and they let that go too. Um, I'm going to disagree with you on a couple things. I like most of your takes on it, but I am not going to give the defense any slack, Tom. That defensive performance was pitiful. I mean, pitiful. Matt Grizzlick having to slide up into a number one role with McAvoy or Carlo going on, that doesn't cut it, folks. Those were two horrible horrible turnovers led by Grizzlick right there he's one of my players that's on my list that i want to send off to whatever planet is behind tom in the background there um Lazon, okay there was a horrible pass in overtime 
that he was trying to go across ice from the blue line. Just use your brain, pal. I mean, what a dangerous disaster. That was a cost in the game right there. McAvoy had a good series. I'll, I'm, I was pleasantly okay with that. But you also got exposed. Mike Riley is not a number one defender. He's a great two or three. But when you have to count on him to slide up into these other roles, then you have a problem. I pin a lot of this on Don Sweeney. We knew going into this season, without a Chara and a veteran presence that was there, you re-signed Kevin freaking Miller, and you expected him to take valuable minutes on your defensive pair and count on him in big games. Got nothing this series. Injury prone, waste of time, waste of any sort of roster spot. If they bring him back again, I will tell you right now, I will not talk about, I will not watch one more ounce of the Boston Bruins until they prove to me they can win the big game when it counts. I also want to put another particular player on blast, and that is Jake DeBrusk. If that person, well, we know who he is, he's Jake DeBrusk. I'm ranting a lot here, folks. This is probably going to be a really good episode, so just make sure you tune in and get your popcorn ready. If Jake DeBrusk is not on the Seattle Kraken come expansion time, I think I'm going to go to the airport and just drive himself there because there is no spot, there is no time, there is no more opportunity for DeBrusk. I don't know how you feel. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I've, I've yeah. seen all, there, there's no more. He was um, basically invisible uh, this series, really. Um, I will say that when Kevin Miller was playing, he played great defense, but that only helps when you stay healthy. <laughs> that's, my, that's another side that I'll also say. When he's on the ice and he's going to be healthy and everything, that's great. That's the production you want. But – He's he's damaged goods. We he's got. I, goods. I'm surprised we got as much out of him as we did this season, or at least in the playoffs. I, I'm surprised he lasted so long. He he lasted what six games? He lasted five or six games, something like that. The other thing we want to talk about because there's a lot of fans that are out there that just want to crucify Tuka Rouse right now. I am not one of those. I do think it's time to move on. Don't get me wrong. It's time to move on. However, you can't single-handedly blame Tuka Rass for all of the problems this postseason. Um, I don't know how much you saw, Phil. I do want to include you into this, too. Phil looks very tired today. Uh, yeah, I don't listen. All I got to say is, I mean, I, it's always weird when people kind of – and who knows? I mean, I don't know that much about hockey, but I saw what happened – with the, the Islanders and um, uh, the Penguins. And it seemed like a very similar situation. And it seemed like they kind of, I mean, I don't know how the Penguins stack up against the Bees, you know, and that I know, you know, you have Sid the Kid who, who still is, I mean, he's still talented. And they still have the best in the league still. Yeah. I mean, I'll and be completely honest, Tom, I'm sure that you probably will say the same. He's a good it, <laughs> Tom is shaking his head. Uh, well, no, but would you say Pitt, do you say would you say Pittsburgh has a talented team and more talented than the Islanders? Pittsburgh, biggest well, yeah, but their goaltending situation. They yeah. the Penguins rely more on their talent than a whole team game. Yeah. Um, would you say the Bruins have more talent than the Islanders? On oh, paper, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah on, on paper. paper. Well, that I think I, I don't know. I think the Islanders have something that maybe we just didn't catch, and we didn't like. I don't think we gave enough credit to Barry Trotz. I don't really think so. No, yeah, I, Bruce Cassidy from what I hear, absolutely yeah. pants this series. Pants. And that's not the first time it's happened. It's not the first time. But I do like him, and I'm not somebody that wants to tell him to get the heck out of here because I do think that the players respond pretty well to him. I think that it's just he's never been able to win that big game. And this goes back to his AHL days when he was in the minor leagues. He's just never been able to win that big, big prize, that Stanley Cup, that big award at the end. 
I think he's one of the better coaches in the NHL, though. I will give him that. But when you can comp- you're comparing apples to oranges with the Barry Trotz, who's won with the Capitals, came in with the Islanders, and look what he did with the Islanders. Whatever he's coaching and whatever system was put in play against the Bruins, he gets an A plus in my book. I mean, hey, we got over a big hump though. We we uh, knocked out the Capitals. So that's that's I mean, a big hump. It was hump, a little but... sweet. It was sweet to see that even with Char, but it kind of still felt kind of sad because, as much as I know Tom is not a big Chara guy. I was one that was very vocal towards the whole thing with Chara going to the Capitals early on. I would say 100% in full confidence that if the Bruins, the Bruins missed Sedano Chara in this series against the Islanders, there's no doubt. There's no question in my mind. If they had Chara, it could have been a different series. I would have much Krug. preferred to get those minutes or even crew. Great point. I would have much preferred to give those minutes to him versus a, um, a, a Lazan or a Tenorti or a, a Grizzlick for any, for any of that matter. Okay. I think the Bruins big, big flaws for this season really did happen in the off season. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tory crew going to the blues. I know the blues didn't go anywhere, but you know what? Replacing him with Grizzlick was a disgustingly, overrated move it was not the move to be made same goes with chara chara really was not replaced they thought they had it with kevin miller they got it when he was healthy but chara gave you durability even if he did wasn't great or is getting older he didn't sit out same goes with krug you know krug was always dependable and always reliable and he was a big part of that power play and you saw how much the Bruins struggled with this power play, especially during this whole playoff run with the Islanders. Even a little bit with the Capitals, it was a struggle. Um, I, I got another couple people that I want to put on that blast off to the moon. Uh, I'm pretty much done with Sean Corelli and Chris Wagner. Okay, done with that. That experiment's over. Something's got to click with Charlie Coyle. The Bruins traded for him. You know, back when it was, uh, what was his name? Donato. And I still like the move. The problem here with Coyle is he doesn't step up in the biggest spots consistently. You're getting older with Bergeron. You're getting older with Marshan. You're getting older with Poster and Krejci and all these things. I still not that old yet. I think they envision. I think they envision the that. Coyle would step into a, a number two center line and be counted on more. I think for the production and the amount of money you're paying for him, close to six million a year, you should be having him put the puck in the net a lot more. So they got to figure out what they're going to do with Coyle. Is he tradable in the offseason? Maybe. Would I trade him? If the price is right, if you get the right deal in there. But you need more production out of that. Um, I'm done with the Nick Ritchie experiment. I think it's time to move on with that all he was was a load and loads did not do very well in this whole this whole run with the islanders he was not physical enough he didn't get any get under anybody's skin so that's somebody that was definitely going to be looked upon to uh figure out what the future looks speaking of future you have three players you have to make decisions on i already kind of talked about tuca but i did not talk about krejci and i did not talk about taylor hall Taylor Hall had a great first round. He was a very good player ever since that whole deadline. But the player that they got against the Islanders was invisible. So that is definitely something that the Bruins are probably going to have a a bargaining chip with him come negotiations with this offseason. The question here, Tom and Phil, is do you entertain bringing Taylor Hall back to Boston? Oh, absolutely. I think the Islanders just played great defense against them. I mean, they were all over him as soon as he entered the zone. He couldn't really do anything. Um, same with Krejci. They were all over that second line and the first line, really. But, I mean, fortunately, Marshan is able to make a few moves with the puck and is able is good with the puck handling to be able to get through everybody and, you know, try to make some plays. Um Another What's guy the dollar that was, figure? What's the dollar figure going to be with Taylor Hall? 
I mean, it depends on who who's you know what what's available and who's who who's going where and who's staying. So if the Bruins came to Taylor Hall the next week too, whatever it was, and said, "We want you. We believe in you. We want you here for a good for a, you know three four year deal or some sorts." Does he sign if it's four or five mil a year and invest his time with the Bruins? Is that enough to keep Taylor Hall here in Boston? That's my big question. I think so. I, I think it because he wants to play here. I think he. I think that's he will take. I've, that's what I've heard. That's what I've seen. I don't think he wants to go anywhere else. I think he knows that the mistake that was made in this offseason with the whole Buffalo deal doesn't want to have that happen again. And his game definitely came to the level that we expected him from his MVP year to come with the Bruins. He's a fantastic anchor to that second line. But the other part of that whole glue, you have Craig Smith, so that's that's not going anywhere there. It's Krejci. Krejci's going to be 36. I think this upcoming year. Yeah, he's younger than Bergeron. So. And they have to uh, figure out what they – actually, he's older than Bergeron. He's one year older. Yep. He's one year older. Bergeron's 34. Krejci's 35. Right now. So it's a matter of figuring out how these figures work. Because I think that if – Krejci and Hall want to be here with the Bruins on another two, three-year deal. It's going to have to be at a somewhat of a discount, especially with this salary cap. The Bruins got some needs. They're going to definitely need some defenders. I would say two. That's up on my list. They have to figure out what they're going to do with goaltender. I would go Swayman, and I might say uh, – I will definitely say goodbye to Rask. The question is, who do you bring in as the backup? Do you go again with Halak? in that backup spot? I don't know. I don't know. No, I'd say Swayman. I think it's Swayman's time. I'd say Swayman and Vladar, really. Those those are your guys now. I think I'd be okay with that. I, um, I, I don't I don't see are you guys moving on from Tuka as well like me? I'm in that stance. Or I think you... Tuka's moving on. I don't think he wants I don't I don't think he can I mean I don't I just don't see him coming back. I don't even think he's gonna play anymore. I think, I, I think he's going to retire. I think, I mean, it's it's tough for a goalie to come back from back surgery, really. Yep. Um, and I mean, he's up there in age too, so I think he's I think he's done. Um, I so I know I'm going to change the subject a little bit, but I think Lazone should be shipped off to Seattle too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would I would expose him through there. I would keep Connor Clifton. I would keep some sort of a safety net on him. I liked what I saw from Clifton. I like him more than Lazone. I like Clifton more than Lazone. I will tell you that. Or is that a tough call, you think, Tom? Uh, Lazone made more mistakes than Clifton did in the playoffs. Just no. I, I, if I had to choose, I'd take, if I had to choose, I'd take Clifton. But, I mean, I'm not a fan of – I'm not really a fan of either of them. Yeah. Um, I think with some more playing time and you know some more bodybuilding, I think Tenorti will be a good body to have. Um, I mean he's got to get more experience, but I I definitely see him having a good future in Boston. Um, I don't think Tenorti really was on my list of anything major that he screwed up on when he stepped to step in. I don't think I just, he did anything drastic. I just wish I, you know, I just wanted to see him be more physical. Yeah, because that's one thing is could have had something to do with him already being so banged up. Yeah, I mean, he was pretty inconsistent. It was it was every other game. One game he'd be physical, and the next game he wouldn't be. So um, I, I wish I saw him be more physical. Um, I mean – I don't think it even matters. The Islanders are going to have a tough test in the in the Lightning next round. So, I yeah, don't think... that's another thing too. And the question would have been: Would the Bruins have been good enough to get past the uh, the Lightning? I don't know, truthfully. After seeing how the Lightning have been in this postseason, I just don't think Ra- I don't theories. think Rask I don't think Rask would have been able to keep up. Or even if they had to go to Swayman. 
I don't think they would have been able to do that either. Uh, the last question I want to ask you guys. So before entering into this game, Cassidy had to make a decision. And I think the team kind of went to him, Bergeron, you know, uh, Martian and all that went to Cassidy and said, Tuka's our guy. But would you have started Swayman over Rask? Not in a game like that. Not a, not in a game. I mean, he's a great goalie and everything. I'm glad he got to see some playoff action, um, but not not in a not in a winner go home situation. Mm -hmm. um, but and like I said, I'm glad he got a period of uh, playoff experience. So, that so that's fun. good. Um, and yeah, I mean that just that just says that Hawk is. Bye-bye. Adios. We're not re-signing I think that, that was kind of the plan moving forward with everything on that front, too. Um, that obviously means that probably our NHL Stanley Cup has, uh, for, for picks, has changed after all of this that has happened with the Bruins. So my overall stance right now, I'm actually changing from the Vegas Golden Knights because I think they're going to be gone, too. I am. I'm going Colorado and Tampa. That is, my, that is what I think is the most logical thing that's probably going to happen happen i'm not going to watch i could care less after that i would have vegas and bruins in it and that's just how i think things are going to fall um all right well vegas just just won game six in uh no was it game five yeah it's tied two two i think no it's game five they won game five um and now they're coming back to vegas so I think Vegas is going to win. Um, I think Vegas is going to beat Montreal. And you know what? Just just for kicks and giggles or shit and whatever. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, I think the Islanders are going to beat Tampa. So you go in Islanders, Vegas, huh? I still I think Vegas that. is going to win. I could watch that. I want Vegas. The Vegas is my is the team that I would say that I, I'd like, but I just don't know if they have it in them to get past Colorado. I feel like Colorado is sneaky good. They're coming back to Vegas with a win in advance game or a chance for a win in advance game. They Colorado has to win two. Vegas only has to win one. Vegas is going to win. So we shall see on that front. Um, I want to go over to NBA. I know Phil is probably ramped and ready to talk a little bit more about everything that kind of transpired in the last week with Stevens and Danny Ainge and more rumors kind of flying all around. Uh, the latest rumor is that, to no one's surprise, uh, Kemba doesn't want to play on the Celtics anymore. Wow, I'm so shocked. So they have to probably try and figure out a trade partner if they get a trade partner in some capacity. Um, What's your take on everything, Phil? How's everything settling with you? Uh, well, I mean, I guess you're shocked because you think no one wants to play on the Celtics. I don't think any, anybody any wants members. to play on the Celtics anymore, Phil. I think they got a horrible problem on their hands. I really do, and I'm being no, honest. I know that's that's a realistic viewpoint. I, I think Jettison... I'm actually generally nervous that Tatum or Brown's not going to want to stay here long term. Well, that, that's really a bigger am. thing. I actually think by, you know, the gentleman's firing of of uh, Danny Ainge actually did, did them quite a bit of service because, you know, was it Anthony Davis didn't, uh, didn't come here for a number of reasons, but one of the, his dad, I don't know if you guys remember this. Uh, his dad said, I don't want my son playing for a team that uh, did what they did to Isaiah Thomas because, you know, they just kind of let Isaiah Thomas go after all he did for them. And, you know, say what you will about that trade, you know, would we make it in a heartbeat? Yeah, probably again, because it was Kyrie Irving, and it was next to nothing. And you still got, you know, you gave up some picks and it wasn't that much. Uh, those picks turned into, I think, Brendan Sexton and some other great players for the Cavs. But still, regardless, listen, I think they'll be getting better. I think it was more or less like, you know, Kemba had said they didn't want to be, uh, he didn't like how he was always on the trading block. I mean, that happens. I mean, other players have done the same thing here and, uh, you know, gone away jay crowder was the same ray allen is another famous one yep. who was on the trading block didn't really care for it and that's i guess that's part of the business but also that's part of how danny ainge and the Celtics did business for a while i mean i don't it know was, it, it was pretty ruthless with some of his moves he's made over the years yeah and you know what? i don't know how any other 
GMs are regarding that. I, I'm ignorant to that uh, thing. So I don't know just how isolated that is, or if that's just kind of how that business is, or just how business is with the Celtics. But, you know, who knows? Yeah, there's, he's got like 70, Kemba Walker has like 76.8 million left, and I think two years left on his contract. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of money either we'll have to eat or someone else will have to eat. But you know they're throwing around a bunch of stuff. Who knows what will happen? Um, and one of the one of the one of the interesting little tidbits that I heard from this whole thing with the Kemba saga is Oklahoma City might be inclined to take him on. That's what I heard as well. Yeah, contract for contract and bring Al Horford back here to Boston. <coughs> yeah, why not? Uh, people don't realize. Uh, maybe I they forget. Yeah, he wasn't a bad player here at all. No, he and wasn't. actually was a shock when he left. It actually was a bigger, big shock. No, really, we yeah. thought we were going to... That's right. Yeah, which was kind of like, it just didn't work out for for the 76ers. And he maybe, you know, Al Horford passed his prime or they just didn't know how to... I, I mean, he has probably passed his prime and they didn't know how to move him. But I think he's a maybe a smarter or better player than Tristan See, the Thompson. Thing that I, I, I would be interested with the reunion with Horford is he's been through this system he knows the team he knows the environment that he's coming into and you know you can take it or leave it for what he's done but for the majority of the part I mean he was a pretty solid impactful player on the Celtics roster so he was he he helped would, develop Tatum and he helped develop Tatum even if yeah. you have to eat some more on on that money I think that that would be better plus Al Horford was pretty dependable you didn't have to worry about the injury bump with um without for the most part. Um, the other question that I still am trying to comprehend with everything is this, how long is Brad Stevens going to last in this uh, general manager's position or president of basketball ops? And the longer this goes on, the more I just say that because Indiana fired their coach yesterday. I don't know if you heard about this. The Indiana oh, I did actually hear about that one, but I, I don't how, know. The how quickly do you think that we're going to see somewhat of a change in that end? And Stevens goes to another team. Uh, I mean, if listen, if if someone wants, uh, if someone wants to get Brad as a coach, and they're willing to give up, you know, whatever, I'm sure no. I mean, and it's also bizarre because he'll be he he'll be negotiating his own, you know, I'm leave sure technically Celtics, or whomever. Wink, wink, is in, yeah. You know, handshake to handshake is Brad. If there's a coaching job that's out there, we will gladly accept you being traded to whatever organization it is because i just feel that there's there's something bigger going on i think they're going in a completely different direction and truthfully i only think the i think the only way the celtics are going to get themselves back into somewhat of a competitive stance here is if you kind of allow and i do this say this very lightly if you have Tatum and Brown kind of hand select who this next coach is going to be. And I think the only way that you're going to be able to do that is with Steven Zadiga. So. I don't necessarily think that's the only way you do it. I mean, I think, I think they all had a conversation about what, how things are going to be and whether Brad is making the decisions or not. Cause you know, Danny wasn't the general manager. I don't think per se, technically. No, he was, was just more guy. of the final say on things, I believe. Uh, yeah, even even then, I don't know as much. Uh, but yeah, I, I think everything's up for grabs, which is kind of fun uh, and kind of cataclysmic in the same right. It's uh, it's fun and chaotic. Maybe chaotic is a better term for it. But yeah, I don't um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. I mean, they've already give uh, the Celtics are already going after a bunch of uh, assistant coaches. They're already interviewing like Chauncey Billups is one of them. The Celtics assistant coach Jeff um, something. Internally, yeah. yeah he's getting, internally, he's, uh, some he's of the players like, yeah. on the team are lobbying for him to actually be the coach. From what I heard. Well, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how that goes, and if it, you know, if it benefits the team, great. But um, yeah, who knows what this will be, and who knows beyond like Stevens getting a coaching job, who knows how long of a a rope they have for him as a GM. Because they only, I forget how many years they have on his original coaching contract or contract with the team. I think team. there's four, four more years left. On yeah. Uh, yeah. Something around there, four to six or something. Yeah. But uh, it, let's see when they pull the hook or when they uh, kind of, you know, jettison him from that position. Um, what was it? I, I just you've noticed uh, too around the rest of the uh, NBA playoffs, anything that you feel for teams? Uh, well, the Suns knocked out 
you know, LeBron James and the Lakers yeah. and yeah. in AD, Anthony Davis was, you know, hurt for most of it, but, and people gave a lot of guff to the Lakers front office for not having a lot of people behind it. But I, I don't necessarily think that was as much of the case. I actually think they got a little stronger uh, with, uh, you know, Schroeder at point. Uh, you got rid of Rajon Rondo, which is, you know, he was a backup. He was like their second unit who could go in and out of the first unit too. And Rajon Rondo is always going to be one of my favorite field generals as a point guard uh, ever. And I, I know he was underrated as that player, which I think the Celtics need desperately anyways. And I'll get into one scenario veteran. where they could get. Gone through the oh, not just, not just a veteran, not just a veteran, just someone who knows how to distribute the ball and knows how to play knows how to play uh, each other, you know, the, each player to their strength and to, to put them in position to and make a good play. A field general. Even the first unit, you could say at times. Even the first unit. Oh, so. no, I don't think there's, I don't necessarily think there's anyone there. I think Marcus Smart is one of the closest to that sort of scenario, but that still isn't his. Marcus Smart makes good plays and hustle plays, but he isn't yeah. necessarily a point guard. He makes, he makes decent point guard decisions. He's made a lot of great ones down the stretch and in big games. Not your but, prototypical point guard. No, uh, I, I would love like, you know, and there are talks of like Alonzo Ball, like of getting people from the Pelicans, like getting like uh, two uh, centers, like Steven Adams amongst them and Alonzo Ball for giving up like a Robert Williams, Kemba Walker, uh, a couple uh, picks or something else. But these are all hypothetical. But as far as, um, I don't know, uh, coaching, you know, or the rest of the NBA. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, LA had Lakers had some good. They, it was Montrell or whatever the guy they got from the Clippers, who was a really great uh, bench player. And I think mm-hmm. I think maybe the sixth man of the year. I forget, but he was really good. And they they had a decent team put together. They just didn't have that one other guy who they really needed to be there who was there. And that's that was a knock people had on AD. Uh, you know, um, and if for good Anthony Davis, and for good reason. Uh, but they won a championship with him because they took it to the bubble and they gave him enough time to heal. Yeah, but. Uh, beyond that, I think the Suns are a fun team. They're good. Uh, right now, everyone who's in the NBA playoffs right now has not, I believe they haven't won, they either haven't won a championship or haven't won one in quite a long time. Uh, and I think, the yeah, only I, right I would say I'm um, Suns. I, I would say that would be pretty yeah. cool to see that, that them go. Um, yeah. I guess the next question is are you a Milwaukee guy or you are, are you a Brooklyn guy in this series? Uh, I'll go Milwaukee. I'll go for like I. Would, I, I would much I rather did, Milwaukee. Yeah, they're down two nothing. I don't know if they'll come out of it, but I just, I want something competitive. We'll see what happens. But you know what? Um, yeah, Brooklyn might run the run the table on the East. Who knows? Uh, Philly might get in their way because yep. they don't really have a big guy. And but DeAndre Jordan hasn't really played that much. Yeah. So we'll see if they're saving his skills, you know, for that, or you know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, everyone who's in the the two you know, teams representing East and West got knocked out in the first round. Yep. Um, and everyone, uh, but the Nuggets are still around. The Nuggets are actually there against uh, the Suns. They're down two nothing. Uh, but yep. Yo- Jokic, uh, Jovic, or jo- <laughs> Jovic, I can't uh, yep. pronounce his name ever correctly. But he won the MVP. Well, rightfully so. He had a great year. Uh, and he, without Jamal Murray, he took that team to pretty great places. And with Jamal Murray, who knows where they'd be right now. But uh, I'm looking forward to, I don't know, as it goes forward. Maybe the, you know, who knows what the Clippers will be able to do too, to be honest. It'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I don't know who, you know what, I, I, it'd be the Nets and, the, um, and Philly in the next round, I think. And we'll see who takes that. I think the Nets will take it. And then you, I think you'll have, uh, I think you'll have the Suns and the Clippers. Uh, I think coming out of the West. I think how things map out on that end too. Yeah, I mean, I like I like Utah. I like Donovan uh, Mitchell, but I don't think you know you have Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Yep. I think that's just enough to overturn where they got. But uh, who knows? Who knows, man? I mean, the NBA is wide open. It's kind of beautiful, like that this I year. It'll be somebody different. It's always yeah. nice to see something like that. Um, the last thing I wanted to just mention here is uh, for baseball front. You guys aware of the situation going on with this substance? Uh, it's not like substance abuse. It's more the substances that have been applied on gloves for doctoring up the baseball. I don't know if any of you have heard about it or have seen it, um, but Garrett Cole has been one person who's been pretty guilty of. They're using something. I don't know what it, it's 
pine tar or whatnot to get some sort of a sticky substance on their hand to get a better grip of the ball. Um, and it looks like it's a big problem going on in baseball right now. And they're hopping on it because the umpires are going to be checking gloves and everything on it. But it made me think, is this one of the reasons why the offenses have been the worst they've ever been since 1968? Uh, that was the last year that they had moved the mounds. Uh, they moved the mounds back a little bit. And then from 69 on, it's pretty much been a pretty much a standard, uh, you know, 90 feet uh, from uh, home plate. But I'm, I'm curious on this because offenses around baseball are really struggling right now. And I don't think it has anything to do with the hitters are getting worse or they're not able to see the ball anymore. I think pitchers have been gotten stronger and are using other things to get a better result. So I don't know what baseball is going to do 100% yet. I would be a proponent for moving the mound back just a little bit. Maybe that'll have players be able to see the ball an extra second or something uh, longer so they can be able to get the ball going uh, a little bit because I, I will say that it's been pretty sleepy trying to see some of these offense, uh, offenses on some of these teams get some production because there's next to none. Um, and it's becoming a problem because it's, I think we all want to see more excitement in the game of baseball. I mean, it's a three hour snooze fest at times. And I think they're looking to do different things towards the game. That might be one thing that I'd be open towards, but this whole thing of like extra innings and putting a runner in second. When it starts changing that aspect of the game, I am not somebody who's going to adapt to something like that. I think it's the most stupid thing I've seen in a long time. Speed up a game to put a runner on second. I mean, come on. You don't change a game that's been played over 150 years just because fans say, oh, it, times are bad. I got to go. It's ridiculous. Um, the Red Sox are struggling again. Um, the Astros are just taking everything out of the Red Sox right now. They can't get a win against them. They did just get off of the sweep against the Yankees, but the Yankees absolutely stink. So you really can't judge much on that. Um, I got one more game against the Astros, which will be uh, tonight, it's Thursday night, and then they'll take on the Blue Jays this upcoming weekend. So that's where things stand on the Sox front. Hopefully uh, they can figure some things out and start getting, uh, getting going again. Anything to add on any of that front, gentlemen? Absolutely. Nope. I, now I'm going to get into more Red Sox viewing. I guess we have to. Also, you well, have a the revolution. Red Sox are only the Red Sox are only a game and a half to get up on the Astros for the wild card. Yep. So they got to get some. They got to get some things going. It's been a pretty good year so far, but they they definitely need to get some some other things going. So other than that, that's our show for today. That was the funeral for the Boston Bruins. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, we will see you next time on another episode of Face the Facts. For Phil, for Tom, for Nick, we'll see you next time. Stay cool.